Welcome to Papa's Workshop. Today I want to talk about Boxes.py, which is a software package that's free and it works fantastic to be able to create all types of different projects with your laser. Now this is not a sponsored video. Now I have seen this software on the Facebook forums and some of the other forums as well. In addition, the Louisiana Hobby Guy has used it on one of his videos and I've used it several times in my videos. Several of the videos that I have used this project in, I get comments all the time. Well, can you just send me the file? And no, I send you the link to the whole entire software because it's so easy to be able to use and you can make so many different items. I'll have a link in the description below so that you can go and download this uh, software for free. There's no reason just to send you one file that I have created because that may or may not work for you in your situation. Just have the whole entire software, which is free, easy to be able to use, and you can create any project that you want then. When you first open up the software, this is the main screen that you're gonna see. And this is the name of it, boxes.py. And again, I'm gonna put a link in the description below so that you'll be able to download this free software but you have a wide variety of different things that you can make with this. First and foremost, boxes. Boxes are very simple to make. Some with the lid, some will be completely closed, some you can do with hinges, it's just a wide variety. You also have the ability to make boxes with the flex. So you can actually cut this out and create the nice round corners with the boxes. Trays and drawer inserts. This is amazing how you can just have the little dividers and make the entire drawer itself. You can also make tray dividers and they don't have to be just drop in. Those will just slide in at an angle. And continuing on down, let's look at some shelves. You can make different types of shelves for holding paint and small tools and projects. They also have wall mounted projects that you can make and you also have whole patterns that you can make. And you can also make the small parts. And they have a whole wide range of different parts that you can make. And in one of the videos that I did most recently was with the laser hold down pins. And then you have some miscellaneous things that you can make. And you can see again, different style boxes that are actually stackable. One of the first projects that I did with this is under the parts and samples. It's not even a box at all. This was my laser hold down pin. And you can make this for any different size honeycomb that you have for your laser. So if you, on mine, I wanted to make this shorter because my honeycomb was not that thick. It was approximately 28 millimeters. And I wanted mine to be about 20 millimeters. The shaft width on mine was also needed to be larger. The honeycomb was actually seven millimeters. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in the seven millimeters. And then the thickness of the wood was three millimeters and everything else looks fine. So at this point, I mean, these are the little hold down pins that uh, work fantastic. So now that you have these different settings, we know the thickness of the plywood. I'm gonna leave this as an SVG right now because when I use this, I can generate it and I can actually see what the pen looks like. And I know this is gonna slide into my honeycomb just fine. So you can make these different adjustments in here very easily. And if you wanna save this to the light burn, just save this right here with the light burn file, generate it and you'll have the file. Now let me go over and open up Lightburn for you. I've opened the Lightburn and I have mine saved in a jig template right here in the art library. And there's all the pins ready to be able to cut. Now this is the file that I actually use to be able to cut out all of my pins. And when I brought this in from the boxes.py uh, site, there was just the one pin. Only thing I did was just copy them and made some additional ones. So if I wanna make a whole big batch of these pins, all I need to do is just, no, well, let's just do it this way. Highlight them all. And then I can um, do the Control and D to duplicate. And guess what? 
I've got a whole nother batch. And that's what I did with that first pin that I brought in. I just batched it out and made it because that's just, I wanted the 12 pins. So let's go back to the software now. I hope you understand just how easy it is to be able to make these hold down pins for your laser honeycomb. Let's click on this right here, which will bring you back to the main menu. I want to go down to the boxes and the other box that I had made was the electronic box right here. What I liked about it is that it had this foot on the bottom where I can actually screw it into whatever I want. So it doesn't have to be electronics. Well, let's just go ahead and leave all of these settings the same and let's generate the box. And there's your box. It's ready. There's your labels for your walls everything that you need this is your base with the little holes in it this is the top here's your hold down pins and the nice thing about it is those hold down pins will go right into these slots right here so it makes it where everything snaps together now let's go back let's say you don't like that instead of having a square box let's change and make this 50 millimeters And we'll keep everything else the same. We'll generate this again. And now you see there's your tabs that will go into the top. Here is your top itself. You can see how all the different dimensions have changed. There's your walls, top and bottom. So that gives you, again, your complete box. So I love how versatile this box is. If you like the size and everything meets your requirements, then set up your file. And again, I use the laser um, light burn software. So I would click on the light burn file and then just generate. And then over in the light burn, and then I can bring in my box. And the nice thing about this, let me show you. This was basically the box and I had eliminated the little tabs here. This was the original box lid, of course, without the hole. I decided to make a larger one to be able to fit on top of the box. And the blue was the location of the camera. So you can add all types of things that you want. You just take out the hole. So you can adapt this any way that you wish. You can also change the settings for the finger joints. If you want to make them bigger, smaller, more space between them, whatever you want to do. Go back to the main menu. If you want to do this with a flex box, here's a box that has a heart in it. So again, we can just take a look at the size of the box that we want. And this is 150 millimeters. There's your 150 millimeters. And the height of this one is 50 millimeters. It's going to be a closed box, so it's got the top and the lid. So let's generate it. And now you can see the box with your flex cut pattern. If you need to adjust this pattern to be able to cut better, you can. Let me show you that. Come up here to the settings for the flex, and you can make any of the different setting changes that you need. Same thing with the finger joints on the box. If you want to change any of those settings, you can do it. Very, very versatile software. Come back to the main menu again. If you have a need to make gears, let's take a look at the gears for an example. You can determine how many teeth that you need, the shaft size, every different setting that you need for your different teeth. These are all the default settings that you see each time. And then there are the gears generated. And that gives you every bit of information and these will mesh together. So this is the spacing between so that you can put these gears on and actually have them work. Then this right here, percent of the D section of the shaft, that was the center of the shaft where you have that into the D shape. You can actually change that. So teeth one, shaft one, 
teeth in the second one. So if this was 15, we could make this one 30 for an example, and that'd be a one to two ratio. The shaft size would be the same as shaft one. Doesn't get a whole lot easier than this to be able to change it. This is a lot more than just a box app. All of this information can change. So I want to modify this little paint storage rack. And this is going to be the paint that I'm going to use. So this bottle is about 33.8. And I'm going to just come down here and measure it. And that is right at 100 millimeters. Yes. We'll leave this dimension the same. We'll leave this dimension the can height. So that's the height of this bottle is going to be the 100 millimeters. The diameter of the can. I'm going to make this 35. In fact, I think I'll make it 36. Uh, we don't need to make the hex pattern. We're not going to create a drawer right now. This will give what I need. Let's take a look at it. So there's all of the holes that the bottle will be able to fit into. You have the top, you have the bottom, and then you have the two sides. And if we want to make a hex pattern, let's take a look at that. We'll generate this. And you see how these now alternate instead of being lined up. I think you can actually see the paint easier that way. So I think I'm going to keep that one. You also have the minimum space between the paint, the paint cans or your paint bottles. And that would be real close. You'd have to pull these apart to be able to do it. But that gives you the height right there. So if you want to have this stackable where you could pull these paint cans out, you would need to have this distance just about equal up here. Well, there you have it. I hope you can see the advantage of having a software package like this on your computer to be able to make all types of different projects. It doesn't have to be just a simple box. Now my son's heavily involved with the gaming with the Warhammer and I know that he is setting up an area in his home just for the modeling and I'm sure in the near future I'll be making some paint storage uh, areas, some bins to be able to have the drawers and all types of different shelves, maybe some uh, holders to be able to put the brushes in, who knows. But this is a perfect software to be able to do that. Cut it out on the laser and it makes it so easy. So I hope that you will download this app. And this is not a sponsored uh, video. This is just me seeing it being talked about on the forums and giving it a try. And I think that if you try this out, you'll like it as much as I do. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. So bye-bye now.